For engraving and knurling I use a grinded pin. It's suitable for softer materials like aluminium and soft steel. For harder materials I use a pencil grinder and a V-shape bit. This is also suitable for deep knurling or deep engraving. In this video I am going to explain how to use the engraving task. For this we are going to engrave a dial and we use a grinded pin to engrave. We start by entering text in the text field. We we'll enter an unsupported character like the T. The character is written or drawn as an orange cross and the character itself is gets a orange background. You also see the background of the lines and the line will be orange indicating that there is a problem. For a dial we need lines and numbers. The lines are represented by characters. The E is the smallest line. The capital E is a medium line and the vertical line on the keyboard is a large line. We're going to make a dial from 0 to 2 having 20 lines. So we start by a very large line followed by four small lines, a medium line, four small lines, a large line, four small lines, a medium line and four small lines. So we have 20 lines, 20 characters. On the second line we are going to make the numbers. We start by a zero, add some spaces, 0 0.5, a1, a1, a1.5. So this will be the text. We select a charter height of 5. and the diameter for engraving was 12.5. We see an orange background in the lines number, meaning that one of the lines has a problem. Line 1 is ok because this background isn't orange. We solve that problem later. We select a cutting depth of 0.2 mm. I've set the home position C to minus 10 degrees, home set to 3 mm, home diameter to 25, start C to 0 degrees, start set to 0.25 mm. I'm going to use a grinded pin, that meaning infeeding in the material is quite difficult. So I start on the right of the tip then there is no problem feeding in the tool. We can engrave text in two orientations, from left to right or from top to bottom. Top to bottom is the way to use for a dial. When we press the calculate button, the character spacing is calculated based on the number of characters and the diameter of the workpiece almost 2 mm. We are now ready for engraving the lines. So we press the full cycle button
OK we're ready for the next line. You press the plus button to get the next line and we see there's a problem on line 2. We reset the character number and we press the plus until we see an orange background on the character. That is the zero. The character is drawn, so the character is okay, meaning it is a problem with the, the character spacing. So between the zero and the point is a problem. We can change it two ways. We can add spaces between the zero and the point, or we can reduce the text height. So we reduce the text height to 4.6 millimeters. That was an option. We press reset. We select reverse. That means that the chart is engraved and at the end the toolpath is reversed. So it is engraved in two directions. This gives a better and even cutting depth when you use a grinded pin. Then we press full cycle. Engraving is done. We are going to remove the burrs by turning the workpiece a very little thinner. So we select the turning task. Accept the last tool. And this is how it looks. Finally we can add some color. I use a pencil pen, that's faster. But you should use a decent paint. That gets a better result. We remove the paint using a turning pass. The paint should have taken a bit longer to dry, but it's looking okay. Thank you for watching.